Good evening, everyone. My name is Elizabeth, the Education Coordinator for Marlene's Market and Deli. Tonight's special guest that we have with us, and it's always an honor, worked with you for many years. We have Nicole Worth, licensed massage practitioner and lymphatic train drainage therapist and co-owner of Harmonic Egg Nor uh, Northwest Center. And she's speaking on the topic of weight loss and the lymphatic system. Thank you so much, Nicole. Yeah, thanks for the introduction as always. You're so sweet. Um, well, I'm so grateful to be here to speak about one of my favorite topics. And it's exciting to see Karen, of course I know. And um, I haven't met Carol yet. Hopefully, um, if you guys have any questions that you'll post them, I really work so much better on a one-on-one -on -one basis, but I have prepared a few things here to talk about the um, how weight loss, how I see it in my practice as a lymphatic therapist and how I've been working with it. Um, I think my goal, because I always get so nervous when I do these things, but um, I think my goal is really just to offer my perspective um, as a massage therapist for 24 years and um, as a lymphatic uh, therapist for the same amount of time, 24 years I've been doing lymphatic work. Um, and uh, I don't think there's really too many of us that really dive this deep, I think, into the lymphatic system. Um, and working on bodies and having a full practice. So I feel like maybe responsible to do that, um, to share that uh, perspective. And so I am gonna share some personal insights and get maybe a little bit vulnerable. We'll see how vulnerable I get um, to share my own uh, weight loss um, journey and weight gain journey and everything in between. It's been an interesting journey um, and share some components about limp. So, I think my goal in wanting to be helpful is uh, so specific to the person. So again, if you guys have any questions, let me know. I would love to speak more specifically. Um, those kind of help me share my stories. But I think to start off, um, so I told you a little bit about me in terms of my professional life um, as a massage therapist. Um, I dove into craniosacral work and visceral uh, organ manipulation. Um, after sort of learning more about the organ systems, um, I really dove pretty deep into the lymphatic system after I found out that it was key to weight loss, that it was a component of weight loss. And I couldn't find anybody locally to me, so that definitely drove me to a lot of places actually all over the world. Um, and expanded my understanding and my sphere of influence and friends. And it's been an interesting journey um, the last 24 years to do that. I think on a personal note, um, I've always been, I'm on the thinner side. I've always been uh, thin most of my life. Um, and I think uh, that's always has different kinds of pers perspective. People assume, I think when people are thinner that they're healthier. Um, and that's been an interesting sort of debunking, working on all different kinds of body types, all different kinds of conditions, um, from really strong uh, weightlifting uh, clients that you come in, look like they have it all together in terms of muscles and strength, and finding uh, weak abdominal muscles, right? So just sort of these flips of what you might see on the outside and what's actually happening on the inside in terms of lymph. So um, I really just don't know over the phone. I have a few ideas when I talk with people, but I really don't know until I start to move that flow of the lymph system through somebody's body, um, really what level of health is going on in that, in that person. Um, but I, I did gain weight when I was in college. In fact, um, when I went away to college, I think that's like, what do they say, the college 15 or something like that. I think I definitely gained 15 pounds. Um, and uh, interestingly enough, in, in that sort of weight loss journey, on a personal note, when I went away to college, I was getting ready to actually, uh, a boyfriend was getting ready to break up with me and told me I was too thin, actually. And I had just recently put on like 15 to 20 more pounds. Um, and I, I went to PLU and I was a coxswain, actually, um, if you know what that is. And so I was uh, pretty, you know, thin and small, but pretty wiry. I would get out on the American Lake early in the morning and row. So, so interesting. And I think that was sort of the beginning of my own uh, weight gain story. And 
putting on more weight um, and realizing how the environment really can affect, uh, we can allow that to affect us. That's the immunity part of the lymph system that we'll kind of uh, go back to. But so interesting to recall that um, when I started to lose weight and right before I started to lose weight, I had another relationship where that person really felt that I was too uh, overweight and that I wasn't very strong. And um, it's so interesting uh, recalling some of those moments of really discovering that weight loss is a lot about just accepting and loving ourselves exactly as we are. So, so key and important to uh, letting the sort of the weight just uh, that you are meant to be um, just to come forward. So, um, and I see that with all of my clients um, on their own uh, weight story. Um, it's really uh, like people will start to slim in lymphatic work, um, but then they'll put weight on actually. Um, so they're checking the scale all the time and it's, it, doesn't, it doesn't matter what the scale says, right? It's how you feel and how uh, you feel in your body. And again, it goes back to that loving ourselves. So, so interesting um, to stumble upon that. Um, but so for me, um, when I was, uh, when I started to lose weight, I, I did start to do lymphatic work, very quickly lost uh, 20 pounds. And that was my discovery around um, how inflammation uh, on a personal journey was how inflammation really plays into um, holding on to emotion or holding on to um, body weight. And, um, and so when I started to release those emotions, I started, the inflammation went down and, uh, I, yeah, I easily lost, uh, 20 pounds right away. Um, and as I've shared before, I, I'll never forget when I went on the plane, I was in France, um, studying lymph and I lost this 20 pounds. And I remember I didn't pack a belt and I like had to hold my pants up like on the way home. It was, I, I just it blew my mind that it would be that quick. But, and I thought that would continue, but there is a little bit of a journey to it. And I discovered there's a diligence. So there's a couple of things I've touched on already that are three causes that I've discovered through weight gain. So I'm gonna highlight them for you is um, malnutrition is probably the most common thing I see in my office. Um, and that is usually typically stems from a lot of uh, inflammation. Um, and sometimes it can be a caloric intake. Um, I, sometimes I'll have a client, like right now I have a client who's doing uh, intermittent fasting. Um, so she is of course eating in a window of time. That's a certain amount of time. Everybody has different parameters for that. And then, you know, maybe roughly 16 hours of not eating. Um, but I can tell she's consuming a fair amount of carbs. Um, I can actually tell it uh, from her vision which will directly affect vision if we're consuming a lot of um, carbs. So, so it can lead to even cataracts, things more advanced um, stages of that. But um, so it's, it's an interesting thing. I don't have, a, I don't come at it from a nutrition standpoint. Um, I am opening up the lymphatic system, which we'll talk a little bit more about, but opening up the lymphatic system and seeing where these inflammation is. Um, and so I've, I've had people, uh, most common is their neck will actually even go down about half the size. So if that happens within just a few minutes of working, maybe five or 10 minutes of working, it's an indication, obviously, that inflammation is the culprit there. Um, but as I work maybe through the body, they might not have inflammation everywhere. Um, just it will be in, again, connection to their, where they're holding anything emotionally. Um, or where the immune system has something going on. Um, but yeah, malnutrition uh, just really gets in the way. Um, so consuming maybe foods that um, are just an excess, uh, so the caloric intake, or what I think it feels like more when I find it to be there, um, it's uh, fillers, right? A lot in foods. So that's one, malnutrition is probably the most common. So, you know, there's a dietary issue. We need to get inflammation down in the gut maybe, but it doesn't always have to be exactly that. Um, it can be in a lot of places in the body. Like I said, the most common one I see right away is um, in the neck and head. Um, but then it's a diligence and a consistency, right? Um, staying consistent uh, is what creates changes in the body. 
um, when we're talking about lymph because it's such a highly compensatory system. So um, when we uh, get together and we do a couple of sessions to evaluate what's going on in the lymph system, it's usually not going to be one or two sessions. There's going to be um, some level, like this client that I just started working with, she, um, I could easily tell that she, we didn't need to uh, do something super intense. We just needed to be consistently uh, reminding the body um, that it's safe and reminding the body that it's comfortable and that it can take in nutrition and all of those things, right? Um, and so we did every other week is actually what we started with her. Um, super important um, to get that evaluation um, because it's just not a cut a cookie cutter thing from each person. They have um, different goals inside their body, um, but we do need to shift the metabolism, how the body is taking in nutrition. Um, and uh, obviously certain levels of nutrition help to burn, like there's a science, of course, to the physiology of it. But again, those emotions will actually slow down that process. And so we need to sort of clear that. Um, we actually work with frequencies and different ways in the office, which helps with oxygen intake. And that is really important for the space. So that's number three is space. Sometimes a client needs to create uh, more space in their schedule, more space in their relationships. Um, sometimes it's uh, more space between meals. Um, or it's too much space between meals. So space is something that will almost always play into some level of weight loss and um, letting the body, and when we're talking about weight loss, we're just talking about letting the body actually get back to its you know, uh, thriving form. And it will look like a lot of different, uh, a different uh, flow in the body will look like a lot of different shapes. Um, so it's very interesting. Um, sometimes I've actually even talked to my clients about when I'm using these different uh, machines, I move them over the body in different ways. Um, it'll almost be so much inflammation that it will be just sort of chiseling it down. So it's almost like a frequency or, um, it sounds dramatic to say a jackhammer, but it, it's like, it's just chiseling away at something that's very, it's been sitting there for a long time and very, um, it's not congested, it's moving or flowing, but it's just very thick. It doesn't have a lot of water to it. It doesn't have a lot of movement to it. It doesn't have that space to it. Um, so yeah, so when we get that kind of going, um, you know, it's interesting how the body, uh, it's a waste and removal system, the lymphatic system. And there's so many lectures I've done on the lymph system. So I'm kind of assuming that some of those things are understood, but, um, but a lot of times, like I will see that osmosis or that diffusion or the movement of water through the body, it'll actually move in and out of the blood or in and out of the capillaries. And it has to have this harmonizing effect. So an example that I wanted to make sure I covered, because I hear so many people talking about um, uh, the keto diet and so many things um, where clients have been coming in do doing that type of diet. And it's very hard on the liver um, in my perspective when I see it in my practice. So um, the way that that shows up, um, because our lymph system is a highly compensatory system, it'll adjust to uh, honestly whatever we're doing, right? It'll uh, find a way to get that waste and removal out. It'll find a way to transport proteins. It'll find a way to digest fats. Um, but the way that it will do that is um, through increasing kind of that um, diffusion. So if the liver is pretty fatty, we're going to have through the thoracic duct, which is our major drainage system from the lower body, um, aside from the fact that it will come to the armpit, um, it'll actually increase from about one to three liters. It'll increase to about 25 liters just to compensate for the liver. So when I start to work on somebody, I will often feel that congestion through there, through the thoracic duct. Um, and, and I say congestion, even though it's moving at like a, a lot, that's a huge volume, usually one to three is a normal daily capacity. So for it to increase to 25 liters through there, um, you know, it's it, we need to get the liver functioning, the ducts dump, dumping, we need to get the colon open. So there are um, other things that will end up uh, helping, and then we'll feel that go back down. Um, so 
I hope that makes sense. It's it's actually quite complex to talk about diffusion and how things get regulated in the lymph system, but um, but that's a great example because it's a one I see all the time in my office. So, um, yeah. So I think uh, let's see here. Let's make sure I don't miss anything. Any questions so far um, about anything? Yes, we had a comment in the chat box. Carol okay. said, I'd like to know more about lymphatic massage and the lymphatic system. And we're learning. Sure. And uh, circulation, inflammation, swelling. And I do believe you did touch okay. on that. And edema. Yeah, these are great. They're almost too general, but I will make sure I cover the topics. And if you can get something more specific, I would love to get more specific in my answer. So a lot of times I will get calls about the lymphatic system um, and they want to come in for a massage and they don't know the difference between a lymphatic session or a massage. It seems like the same thing. I think also this is sort of confused a little bit with um, Instagram, people talking about gua sha and they're doing all these like heavy movements. And so why can't I just do like some scissor hands or something along the jaw, right? It's not the same. Anything that is a certain amount of pressure where we get into the muscle, it's, that's when it's a massage. And when we get into the muscle and we're doing some kind of massage, all the lymph will stop flowing actually in that area. Um, now we can still move along and do a massage technique, or we can do something like that and drain something if we felt like the salivary gland was a little swollen or we're getting some gels or something and we're thinking, well, I'm going to, I'm going to just like drain these nodes. You can certainly like push them along the pathway of that area. But when you learn more about the lymphatic system and how intricate it is, that might only work for about you know, 40% of the population where they can do that and then they feel like it's better. Uh, I've actually had maybe, I'm going to just take a wild guess, about 10 people that heard about something on Instagram, started doing it, uh, either gua sha or a bunch of different things, um, different techniques on the face from an influencer, someone who doesn't have a lymphatic background, and they felt like something was wrong. Their face was getting more and more puffy. And in these cases, I mean, we needed to work on the lymphatic system, kind of going back to the example of the liver cirrhosis, you know, it's like it's compensating in a different way. And then here we come along sort of just dropped into the middle of the lymphatic system and um, doesn't not so effective. So when we're getting any kind of deep tissue or any kind of pressure where it's a significant amount of pressure and we're always doing it on the same side, we do really need to listen to our body if it feels appropriate because we are breaking lymphatic vessels and they can repair themselves in about 24 to 48 hours. But if we're returning again and we're doing it every 24 hours, you know, and it, it could uh, cause a problem down the road. So that's a little bit about lymph and massage and the lymphatic system. I think the components that are really important to mention about the lymphatic system before I go on to the next question, and please put in any other more specific questions. I'm here to help answer any of those things and make some clarifying answers that are more specific um, for you. But um, the lymphatic system is a water system. It's like a second uh, circulatory system, which actually there was a couple notes of this that I wanted to cover. Let me pull them out to make sure I don't miss anything. But so it is a second circulatory system. So this will address a little bit of the second question. Um, and so we have three water systems. We have our blood, right? Our cardiovascular system. And then we have our lymphatic system. And we actually do even have lymphatic vessels inside the cardiovascular system. And when we have lymphatic vessels, depending where they're located, we might have a slightly different name for them even. So uh, like we have, uh, and not vessels, but cells. So we have um, in the brain, we have glial cells um, that help to drain the brain. Uh, brain. Um, we have uh, Peyer's patches that help create the white blood cell counts in our colon. Um, but, you know, I mean, we have our uh, bone marrow in our bones that also help with um, white blood cells. So it's an interesting uh, thing to, you know, I think recently, was it a couple of years ago now, they've been talking more and more that maybe the immune system is its own organ system, which I would agree with that. It's got its own sort of um, 
I mean, it's, it's nebulous because it's a water system, right? So we've got our blood pumping and it goes in between the cells, it becomes interstitial fluid. But as soon as it enters into the lymphatic vessels, it becomes lymphatic fluid. So it is kind of interesting how it, it's a name by based on where it's located. But, um, but then we also have a third water system and that is our craniosacral system. And these three water systems are all part of our emotional state, our immune system, and heavily influenced by our lymphatic system, whether it's flowing or not, and um, also influences those. Also something to keep in mind is that it's almost easier to talk about what lymph doesn't impact than what it does, because it does affect all seven channels of elimination. So when we think about circulation and movement and these kinds of things, and then of course, you know, swelling is a lack of that movement. It's a issue going on, a problem with the flow of that, one of those water systems, right? Um, so when we start to have sort of that uh, issue uh, happening in the body where there's a circulatory system, it's, it's often involving uh, several of the channels of elimination. So when we come in for the lymphatic session, we are opening up all of them. So the seven channels of elimination, let's make sure I don't skip any, there is the skin, liver, lungs, kidneys, colon, bladder, and of course, our lymphatic system. So when we start to move lymph, it's, it becomes very obvious by the second appointment uh, which eliminatory organ is involved and what steps we need to take for that. So sometimes the, there's exercises that I give to people within the two appointments. That first appointment is kind of a baseline. The second appointment kind of tells me what organ system is involved. Uh, and then sometimes it's a, a, a dietary suggestion or because um, I am a master fermentationist and have a nutrition background. Um, so we definitely talk about those elements um, because lymph is involved in those elements. Um, and, and it's largely intuitive. So it is moving through that fluid, then, then we can do it. Sure, I can repeat the, I'm assuming you mean repeat the channels of elimination. They are skin, liver, lungs, kidneys, colon, bladder, and then we have our lymphatic system just a few areas of the body that are not directly influenced by what's happening in the lymphatic system. Um, and even those are indirectly affected. So our lymphatic system, again, is our emotional state. So if we're highly stressed or whatever, that's going to show up in different parts of our lymphatic system, whether it's flowing extremely fast, like I was talking about earlier about the thoracic duct, a section of the midline here. Um, and yet then we've got this uh, compensating area where the liver is just flooded with congestion. So it uh, is highly compensatory and we want everything to be flowing and working together and harmonized in the ways that it should be. So, um, so uh, I think, so inflammation and edema are big topics. So I'm gonna try to tackle them. Um, but inflammation, I, I like to use the, the analogy. I hope this will work for all of you. Because um, usually in my office, if an analogy doesn't work, I have like four more that I can throw out. Because um, we do, I do tell her things to people. But I think of it as almost like, like here I'm in University Place, a suburb of Tacoma, Washington, you know. So we have Fircrest, we have the uh, fire station. And it's sort of like that inflammation in the body, something kind of shows up in the body that is uh, causing an inflammatory response. We got in a motor vehicle accident, a loved one uh, got injured, um, you know, uh, we ate something we shouldn't have, right? But we ate something that we know is gonna trigger some kind of response to our body that's not the best, right? So, uh, so we're doing some kind of inflammatory thing the, the fire trucks are gonna be sent out, right? From the brain, it's gonna send out this inflammatory response. They're gonna be sent out. Now they're coming from lymphoid tissue. So they're coming from sections of the lymphatic system where they really should be like the hub. They should stay in their hub, just like our fire trucks should stay in unless there's a fire. They really need to be there. It's much easier. They're usually centrally located. They're able to get to wherever they need to go. If they're out on a jaw, 
right? And we've got this inflammatory response happening. If their fire trucks are out at that job site, it's gonna be much harder to get some of those to go over and deal with another fire somewhere else. Same thing if we have you know, all, these, all these cells going to all these inflammatory responses, you know, some tennis elbow that you have had since you were 16 and played tennis a whole bunch. Um, you know, you uh, got hit in the head a little bit with a couple of balls. Now we've got some inflammatory responses happening there. And the body just gets sort of inundated. Maybe there's some dietary things in there. Um, you drink a bunch of milk or something like that, and you're not a, uh, you're an A uh, blood type um, or something. And so we've got all these complications and we've got all these like sort of um, the dictator from the brain is telling and sending um, all of these responses, or maybe the spleen is sending some of that. So we've got this uh, sort of hodgepodge of messaging that we need to go to these sites and clean up these fires or turn off these, uh, you know, be involved in some of this inflammatory response. But then we have it carry on for so long. Uh, the, the dictator is still sending that message, but we locally haven't resolved it. So the most common way that I see this sort of analogy show up for people is through eliminatory diets. When they eliminate, you know, whatever the culprit seems to be, um, I've had clients come into my office and say they can't eat almonds or something like that. Um, so they remove something like that uh, and, you know, and everything's fine as, as long as they don't eat that thing. Um, it's, it's just very interesting to me because the immune system it's really just overstressed oftentimes by other, other uh, local areas that need to be you know, uh, tidied up and those jobs need to be completed. And then now, you know, now that that person's more relaxed, they can eat almonds, no problem at all. So it's usually about opening up these channels of elimination and opening up um, that person to trust and let go of some of these emotions and uh, risk. Um, that the other side is it's going to be better. So inflammation is an interesting thing because it's actually really needed and necessary. Um, but it's the, when we get into that chronic state, uh, that's where we start to get to more problems. And when we start to understand more about lymph and how it holds all these memories and uh, stores things in the tissues and then pulls things out of the tissues to deal with them, um, we can be you know 20 years outside of an event and locally that that body is still you know dealing with something that it's never got exactly rid of um, and cells hold a lot of memory each cell holds about six gigabytes of information which is more than a smartphone so there's a wealth of data that needs to maybe be sift through um, I recently had a client new client uh, last week she came in for her evaluation and within about, uh, when we're moving, when I work with a machine where we're moving lymph 12 times faster uh, than manually using my hands. So because of that, the assessment can be moved along rather quickly. But so I could feel this inflammatory response all through her rib cage. And I could feel it very specifically in sections of the brain. So I continue to notice that all this other information is coming at me while I'm opening up the lymphatic system. And I could feel her putting her hand out like she was trying to catch herself. And um, so I just took that in and I wait until things kind of loop a bunch of times. And then I start to ask questions while during the session um, so to bring in clarity, to let that person know that this is a pattern that's coming up. And so they can explain anything if they want to is why why we may or may not talk about something. Um, but so sure enough, she had had an injury when I think she was 15 and she relayed some of the data to me about that. And I could feel so much of that going through the lymph system and going away. Um, and then the second appointment, I felt it very, uh, like maybe the first 30 seconds and then it went away. So we are tidying up that inflammation, that response and the deeper issue is actually part of the brain. So that's why we are continuing to work together. She signed up for twice a month. So uh, it's very interesting. We need to tidy up those old messaging and get rid of them, junk them, because they are not uh, really needed anymore. They're taking up space. And in this case, it was so over her whole body, um, she immediately had an increase in energy. 
So inflammation is an interesting thing and it's usually very specific to the person. Um, any other questions I can address? Let me close this maybe um, and see. Um, I have a quick question. Okay, sure. sure. Um, if someone were to come and have sessions with you, um, this might vary per situation, but what are some good um, supportive herbs or supplements that they can um, take to increase the um, efficiency? Yeah, I think sometimes I actually did an article. Um, now I can't remember how many years ago it was, but it was like, here's everybody always wants the list of things to do, right? And it's so specific to each person. So it's more like the list of like what not to do or something. You know what I mean? In a way. So it's like, uh, yeah, I, you know, I think, um, so I think that there are some herbs that are really good. I think a lot of times they need to be fresh. And so that means knowing what they are and harvesting them fresh. So the first one I think of is cleavers. So amazing in spring, but it needs to be fresh and you want to juice it, juice it actually. But here's what's interesting about the lymphatic system though, which I kind of did some detail around. It's so specific and there's all this like harmonizing and compensating and yeah, and so, you know, it's a, it's a diuretic. So if somebody runs kind of more dry and they drink water and it runs kind of right through their system, they might go, oh, I have some kind of lymph issue. I have some kind of inflammation in my, you know, ankles. I have some swelling. Uh, and I'm actually thinking of a specific client. She has some swelling. And so she thinks, oh, okay, I need to do a diuretic. It's because I have some swelling, but actually she's a hot person and the diuretic will actually help, but only for a week or something. And then now we've got a different condition going on because there's a, there's something within the body that we have this sort of, you know, yang, right? Heat or demonstrative thing. And then we've got this sort of yin, right? Cause there's balance in lymph. So then we've got this yin thing that's very, very deep in the body. And we need to actually kind of draw it up when the body's ready to work on it. And then it will become yang and it will be presenting itself and then we will work on it. So yeah, it's it's hard to make a, a blanketed suggestion just because you I know how intricate our systems are. But so most of the time when I talk to people on the phone, if they call me, the most standard things are gonna almost be so boring to mention, but I'll mention a couple anyways is that we need to go to bed, we need to get plenty of sleep. Sleep is just so, so important, but it's gotta be rested sleep. It can't be medicated sleep. So, you know, that's that's something, uh, you know, so if we need to work with like essential oils to sort of help, which is not medicated, um, to sort of help the body get back into that kind of rhythm, then that's great. So, uh, you know, that makes me think of Tulsi as a great herb for harmonizing the body and sort of helping the adrenals and kind of balancing things there. But, and so there's a few herbs that can be helpful that are more tonic, like nettle. I love nettle for people. Um, dandelion can be a great one, but then again, we can get into some problems with, um, cause it works as a diuretic. So yeah, it's, and it can be too strong for the liver if the liver is really congested, even though it would be good for the liver, right? It can be too strong for a fatty liver. So yeah, it's, it's interesting. But so, and then hydrating would be the biggest thing, but most of the time I see people drinking it out of bottled waters and that's not good at all. So yeah, so we need to buy, uh, you know, and notice too, when you go to the store, you'll see bottles on the top shelf and they're right off the fluorescent lights. And then something else, like actually as a side note, I, met, I had it in my notes in the beginning and I skipped it. And it's a little bit interesting, maybe for some people, is that there was a little time, like maybe a month or two, where I was working so many hours. I actually just went right over, Whole Foods is really close to me. And I went over to Whole Foods and was getting salads over there. Couldn't quite make the distance to Marlene's, right? So then I had a little break in my schedule and I was like, gosh, I really just want to get a salad from Marlene's. So I made a special trip and started getting a little bit better, more boundaries, better boundaries, right, with my scheduling. And so then I was just like, oh, and I love the tahini uh, salad dressing, which is almost sometimes if it's out, I go over to the deli and I'm like, can I get like the second batch of tahini, you know, because <laughs> they'll have a second one ready to go. But so 
what I discovered through that like sort of mini time where I was pretty consistently getting it from Whole Foods and then pretty consistently getting it from Marlene's Market and Deli is that there's a world of difference between where Marlene sources their vegetables. Yeah, and it makes such a difference. And so, you know, we can say that it's really important to uh, hydrate, but the type of water kind of matters. And it's really important to eat vegetables, but where it's grown in is really matters. So yeah, it's, it's hard for me to do too many specifics. I think also because I have find that a lot of clients come in and they want a checklist and they wanna like do X, Y, Z and they feel like if they do X, Y, Z, they'll be healthy. But the stress of doing X, Y, Z is making them actually just have inflammatory responses in their body. So I don't know. So I try not to give too many. I like to just give the next step and the next step and work on relaxation. So that that one would be, I think the apps for like meditation and those things have taken on like more of a um, uh, legs, you know, they, people do that more and more. And I think those are good. Yeah. Thank so, you. Yeah, so hopefully that helps a little bit, but, um, and those are the general ones I would go over with clients so that are interested. Yeah, is listening to their intuition, having high mineral content food, right? Yeah, water, sleep. Yeah, kind of worrying. Those are good ones. <laughs> yes, they're, um, they're, they're the good basics. Yeah, I think so. Like right now, with um, a couple clients that I have that I'm working on weight loss, is it's really like they have so many good systems in place. It's really just about opening up that space in their body and helping them actually know that they're doing really good things for their body and change some of the messaging. So, a lot of times, the message for a person that might have nodes that are swollen or different things is they're saying a lot to themselves oh, I have to go and do this. Oh, wait, I can't do that because blah, blah, blah. Or I have to go and do these things. Oh, I have to go to work and, you know, oh, and I can't go to the beach or whatever. And they're doing lots of this dialogue and that is creating a problem in the lymphatic system. Yeah, and it will show up actually, it'll become very obvious. I'll see who does it more than often or maybe um, somebody who just has a tendency to do that. Um, those will sign up, those will show up in different parts of the body. And then I will go over that with them. Yeah. Those are the two maybe top phrases, but there are so many more phrases, but yeah. Yeah. So, um, so as we cleanse the lymphatic system, what can happen is sometimes what comes up first is the thing that is the block to actually letting weight go. So I will see this happen and, um, and I love that I feel like it's such a sacred place where people allow me into their inside world and what's happening for them. And so, yeah, so when they feel comfortable to actually mention to me um, something that they're debating or some tendency that they have, um, it's a sacred place to talk about that. But those are often those are often the things we need to sort of work through in some capacity, meaning we just need to do a few more sessions to sort of clear that tendency. Or, um, you know, as I get to know clients more and more through the sessions, uh, it's pushing just a little bit around an area um, to deal with. And sometimes it's around boundaries uh, with loved ones or uh, things like that, but we either align things in their body, or again, it's just cleansing it out. It's old messaging. It doesn't even apply to them who they are right now. Um, and I think that's the biggest thing that surprises people um, is that uh, they feel that they're coming in and having an authentic experience of something that is a problem for them. And really, we're actually experiencing something that they tackled a long time ago and now they just need to know that that is actually what they need to push through to get on the other side so the last little weed or whatever right yeah so, so that's often shocking to people um and then when we're on the other side I always tell them I'm so glad you pushed through and they're like I know I was kind of feeling like giving up but on the other side of that is of course that freedom and that new pattern of drainage that helps enforce the changes. And so that's really the biggest thing. I think people maybe know what they wanna do and it just opens up their spaces and their bodies to actually will it to get to another level. 
Um, and I'll see clients do that. They'll cleanse with me for a little while, take a break, come back in when they want to tackle something new. And we will feel how we've uh, overcome so many other things in their body. It'll be a pattern that we will um, revisit um, and they'll feel the difference. So I think those are my main points. Let me um, maybe, I don't know if there's more questions, but the last little Here. thing to mention is my offer. So I always offer some kind of discount on something. And so really the evaluation is, is highly effective. It would be uh, two sessions of facial, which is 125 you pay at the time of booking that. Um, that facial is not a facial esthetician facial. It's actually working the major drains of the lymphatic system. And so it just tells you the location that we're going to be working, but it is one whole water system. There's no isolating it. So when we actually work on the upper chest and the collarbones and face, we are opening up all the lymph nodes. So I'll feel all of them open up. And all of them, if they open up really nicely and everything seems really great, we'll add about 10 or 15 minutes to that facial. And then that's when it turns into a focus session and we will spot treat the lymph nodes. And that will uh, clean that whole lymphatic system. And that's, that's 125. It can end up being close to an hour, but it's at least that 30 or 40 minutes working on the upper major drains. Um, then we do a full body. And um, if we wanna move forward with that, and those two full bodies would be 210 each. So if every if that evaluation goes well um, and those three sessions like suit you, um, the offering is, is that I'm adding in um, non-needle acupuncture. So been proven that that will help weight loss. So I'm, I'm fully trained in auricular therapy and I do have been doing seating for, I think it's been three or four years. Um, but this year I've been setting it for a while and added it in and um, I'm loving it um, because it's electrically adding it in. So you don't have to keep pushing the ear seeds and I find it's actually more effective. So we increase uh, again, energy and adrenals is a big thing along with weight loss, not really feeling like people have the energy. Again, that stems from that over inflammation, taking up a lot of pathways, uh, old messaging, we just need to junk and create space in there. Nothing to do with where they're at right now, oftentimes. Um, and so once we get sort of these uh, acupuncture points, it takes just a few minutes to do before they get on the table. Um, and so I'm doing, uh, it's up to a $500 value. We'll do five of those in a set of eight. A set of eight is usually pretty standard, just a nice clean of the lymphatic system. So if there's more going on, we may want to do more. Um, and then we can take a look at adding more of those free non-needle acupuncture points. It just all depends about what the client needs. So when we do the evaluation. So no discount on the evaluation. It's definitely worth its money. Um, you'll come away with exercises and evaluation. I had a client um, this was a couple months ago now, I think it was, um, she came in, she had done all this hormone testing and she had done all this um, exhaustive thyroid and just everything. And she hadn't quite gotten to that when we were just sitting down to the, do the evaluation. And I told her, I said, I can see that the left kidney is having a problem filtering. Um, do you, are you aware of that? And she was like, you know, I just got the results back and they were saying that I was having some filtration issues with my kidneys. And she's like, how did you know that? And I was like, yeah, I can see the signs and symptoms through the eye and different things. So I think it's testing is, is a, an effective way to get the science. But while we were working the lymph, we are um, at some level finding prognosis of different things and while we're clearing it. So I think it's definitely worth the money to come in and just get an evaluation, see what's going on. So much changes in just the first three sessions. Um, and so sometimes people will uh, leave and come back later and do more cleansing later um, after they do the three. Um, Cause I, again, I give them exercises and things, next steps, right, to do. So that is a really uh, amazing tool. Along with that, besides weight loss, we can do acne, rosacea, so amazing for any redness of the face. We can really open up the liver and you know the alternative is usually topical creams and not a lot of solutions. So here we're gonna open up the flow. 
Uh, TMJ, oh, such an amazing tool. Uh, so again, we're doing lymphatic work, but then we're doing some of this non-needle sort of acupuncture. So no needles, we're just uh, putting a little Q-tip basically up against there and using specific frequencies. So you'll hear little noises and pops, and then it lasts for 24 hours. Um, so gentle. I've seen people get an adjustment in their spine, like while I'm working on them. Um, I've seen people like, while I'm doing it, their lids go half mass and they're so <laughs> relaxed and ready to get on the table. So opening up the lymphatic system, we do open up all the meridian lines. So when we add in the non-needle acupuncture, we're just sort of uh, getting them ready to be really relaxed to let the lymph move no problem. Um, but it does last for a long time. I, I've seen people um, months later still having effects actually from the non-needle acupuncture. Um, but then we can treat pain and then also the weight loss. So we have specific protocols for all of those things. And I'm sorry, it looks like there's more. Uh, what do you mean about clearing methods? Hmm, I don't know how I said that, but we are clearing the lymphatic system. So when we open up the lymphatic system at the major ducts, um, the major drains, I actually kind of think of the analogy for this, maybe this will answer your question, is the, um, it's almost like a clogged sink. So we have the piping underneath the sink getting clogged and the water in the sink doesn't move so great. Well, in our body, when we are clogged up, the major drains will get kind of cloggy and not sticky and they won't work so good. And uh, the water in the body doesn't move so great. So while I'm doing that facial, that uh, you know, decollete, collarbones and face, and I'm opening up that area, the nodes will also start to open up, which are the filters in the lymphatic system. So they will start to filter the water that's local to them. And then uh, I will feel all of that opening up. I'll feel uh, lines of tension, all sorts of things. And uh, I just make sure that all of them open before we do anything more. Um, because what happens is they are dumping and they're moving along and it will recongest here and then we're cleaning it again. So it's this sort of cleaning of the whole lymphatic system. Uh, yes, it is recorded. I think probably Elizabeth answered that one. But so the only last thing, unless there's any other questions would be to cover um, edema. And it looks like we're... Hey, Nicole, I think you're, you are uh, muted. Uh oh, how long have I been muted? Hopefully not too long. Oh, no, it was just like a, a couple of seconds. Okay, <laughs> that's good. Um, yeah, and so uh, if you guys have any questions about uh, the ways to work with me or anything like that, the best way to get started usually is that facial for 125, and then after the evaluation, we can move into other modalities or, um, or more lymphatic work. Um, and uh, I think that with edema is oftentimes when people are saying that they have, they're referring to their lower legs, I think most of the time. Um, but, and because when they mention swelling, it's other parts of their body. Um, but the thing about edema, if it's been, if there's any kind of lymph pooling in the body, and it doesn't really seem to correct itself at night. So say maybe uh, you get up in the morning and you're like, oh yeah, my ankles and knees are you know, not swollen like they were when I went to bed. Um, and they're like, uh, but then they notice, and so that means the lymphatic system is working, it's compensating and making up for issues that might be going on. But then within maybe an hour, if they're starting to swell again, that is a cardiovascular issue. But um, in this lecture, I haven't covered it specifically, but we'll go ahead and cover it really quickly, is that we have the heart pumping and it will leak into that interstitial fluid, right? Cell in between the cells. And then the lymphatic system capillaries over here will, these flaps will open and, and they'll suck in that interstitial fluid and it becomes a part of the lymphatic system and it goes all the way down until it gets to lymph nodes and then gets screened and clean right at the, at the major nodes. So the problem can be is within the lymphatic system, the cardiovascular system more so, 
um, that there's uh, something getting stuck in that system and it's kind of like sludging kind of a, the whole process. Um, and that can be a lot of a lot of reasons um, to too many to probably go into, but but that would be more of a cardiovascular issue. Um, oftentimes the liver is really congested, like we were talking about earlier. So the lymph is compensating and moving more and more liters at night uh, to try to make up for that. But that is not a like we're going to run into some problems. We need to kind of get in to find out where the actual uh, stuck area is, and it is often emotions that are accumulating. Um, so edema is kind of a trickier one because it's been ongoing for a while and it's been pooling. And then when things pool, that water will break. So it's like a solvent. It'll start to break down vessels, break down vascular vessels, just start to water. If you think of like any kind of tsunami or flood, I mean, it just is extremely powerful, right? Um, so we need to have vessels, we need to have these sort of um, valves in place, we need them to be moving and functioning um, so that they can uh, not be uh, come like a solvent and being broken down by the water. So yeah, kind of interesting edema is. So yeah, so movement is really important, but yet then we need to rest and the lymph is most active at night, right? Again, so this goes back to that highly compensatory system. And because it's highly compensatory, it, it really needs to be evaluated. So yeah. Well, hopefully that adds some insight to all the people that are watching on the replay and, um, and post questions if you have them. Yeah. Wonderful. Thank you, Nicole. <laughs> yeah, thanks for having me again. Always a pleasure. Yes, always a pleasure working with you. I was trying to think about it. I think we've worked together now for like, I think over eight years. Yeah, at least. Yeah, in at 2020, least. I started. Yeah. Yeah, and then um, Lori was scheduling with you. Yes, Lori yeah. Lively. Mm -hmm. Our, uh, hey, Nicole, my name's Jennifer. I was wondering, do you know some of the soonest appointments that you have available? Yeah, it's a great question. So I was just talking to somebody earlier and I was telling her, you know, when in my practice, we have that basic eight, right? That people, that's just a really good number, a really good cleanse, whether we do one a month for eight months or we do, you know, four in one week and four the next week and we get our eight in that way. Um, everybody is so different how that works. So when I can accept new clients, it's really, it's, it, so right now I have two spots open to take on new clients. And then after that evaluation, and again, we co-create what's that frequency look like for you? What are the goals that you have? How fast do you want to get to those goals? Um, it's really huge on client care and finding what's going to work for you. So I have a wait list if I can't uh, get you in right away, because oftentimes people will cleanse with me and then they'll be like, oh my gosh, I didn't know how much that was going to help me with my cellulite or whatever. I thought I was just going to, you know, cinch here. Um, and so, I mean, it's just a better alternative to a lot of other things out there that are, don't use natural energy and uh, cut into the lymph system, right? Cosmetically or, or do, fill, excuse me, fillers or something like that. Um, this is all very natural negative ion energy, and um, we just need a lot of it. So, yeah, so I have two spots to take uh, evaluations in for two people and then see, make sure that everybody is two sessions past good. And I, I am an international business. So like even now this week, I had um, somebody from Germany and then I had somebody from uh, Nevada. So I do have other people that come and they can add more to the schedule. So um, yeah, that's kind of how that works. So call right away and I could get you two people in, so. And tell me about the offer. Yeah, so the offer is, it's 545 and you do not pay that all at once. Because lymph is so specific and because I do a lot of other modalities, I want to evaluate. I'm sorry. Nicole, Nicole, I'm afraid my computer's going to die. I'm so sorry. I think I'm at like 5%. Um, it's 125. Me... 
Okay. It's 125. That's the offer? The offer is once you get your evaluation, then we will add in for free the non-needle acupuncture for either weight loss or TMJ, and that'll be an add-on feature that's free. That's the offer. So the evaluation is the same for everybody. Yeah, it's 125 for that facial. And when we schedule that one, we do schedule the second appointment, um, but you only pay for the first appointment. So that way then when you come into my office, we make sure that that's the next step that's gonna be best for you. And it's just one of the acupuncture appointments? Nope, it's five. It's a $500 value. Oh, okay. Now I'm, so it's, it's six appointments total or eight appointments total? Nope, you are getting an add on service and you're getting that specific to weight loss or if something else was needed. Uh, again, sometimes people come in and they say they want uh, weight loss, but I actually find they have pain in their knees or something like that. Then I would do a different protocol with a non-needle acupuncture machine in addition to the lymph that you're paying for. So right now that's an $85 a session service that people pay and you would get that service for free. You will still pay for the lymphatic systems. There's no discount on that. I'm very good at what I do and I've been doing it for 24 years. So there's no discount on getting evaluated. Evaluations take usually three sessions within a week period it takes up a lot of time. I, I write out exercises. It's definitely worth the $545, but not everybody needs that exact evaluation. Sometimes they only need two appointments. Sometimes they need five appointments. I don't know until you come into my office and you get evaluated. I'll, your phone might die, but I'll give you a quick example. I had a client, this was uh, the first one that popped into my head, but this one was a year and a half ago. I think it was, and she came in and she was post tummy tuck and she had a lot of swelling and uh, couldn't figure out week three post surgery, went and had her evaluation with the doctor. The doctor's like, are you doing this? Yes, are you doing that? She couldn't figure out what it was, why she was so puffy, right? Well, I told her on the phone, you know, you're gonna be puffy six weeks up to post surgery. You can swell. Do you feel like it corrects itself at night? She was like, no, not really. I was like, okay, come on in. We're gonna evaluate you. It was 125 for that facial. And I was able to actually work more of her notes and I could feel all this congestion around the liver. And I saw that she had a tattoo, but it seemed like it kind of cleared. Well, the second appointment she comes into, which that first one is just a baseline. So it just gives me like kind of the hot points of things that are going on. But the second appointment is tells me what is chronic what's what's really what we're going to be working on and so in that second appointment i could feel all that congestion so deep so i just intuitively thought you know i think i need to ask her about this tattoo i think it's something to do with that so i don't normally comment on tattoos or ask people about that so it was very unique to her where i felt like the congestion was coming from i asked her about the tattoo she gave me a very quick answer oh i got it like three years ago and i said oh okay uh, can you tell me more about that? And I asked her a couple of specific questions. Well, she started to cry, which not everybody cries in my office, but she started to tear up and cry. And I said, it's okay, you know, um, to do that. Cause I could feel that she needed me to tell her that it was okay to do that. And so, uh, she, yeah, she actually just sobbed like for a good three minutes. And as she had started to tear up, I started to be able to move the lymph. So I knew there was a story behind that and she was felt comfortable enough to just let that go. Well, as I, after I cleared it a little bit, I asked her, I felt, I don't always ask, but I, in this case, it felt like I needed to ask her, uh, you know, what was this about for her? Cause I feel like there's still a little inflammation in there. And um, so I asked her that and she said, well, three years ago, I went and got that tattoo after my brother died. So she had, you know, done that and had stored some of that around the tattoo. Well, after that, I mean, it was just everything opened up and she was amazing. We did one more session and um, that was it. And I, I actually still talk with her and she's doing really great. So, I mean, it was just something that we were moving at such a high volume, that lymph, 
and she felt comfortable and I intuitively asked about it. Again, every situation will be a little bit different. Um, she, she did not need any more sessions. We resolved the main concern that she had. So an evaluation is really important. There's no discount. I mean, it could have been wildly different if I didn't have that training or that intuition or all of those things. So um, yeah, so I think it's definitely worth it. But it would be 125 for the first facial to make sure that we need that we're in the right modality and that we would keep going. So, oh, I thought Jennifer was still on, but that's okay. She popped off and Roberta hopped on. Um, any other questions? I feel like that's uh, pretty complete, right? Yes. Okay. I don't see any other questions. Let me check Facebook here. Okay, sure. Right. No questions. Yeah, there. I feel like. I feel like I could share another story really quick. Would that be okay? Oh, yes, of course. Okay, one more. And I think I might have shared this maybe even at my last lecture, but it was such a big deal. I had this client come in and she really wanted to have me work on her left breast assist and she was getting ready to have a biopsy. And, um, and so I knew the goal, right? I'm going to do this facial focus session and that I, as soon as I'm done with the 30, 40 minutes, I need to get to this breast and I need to work on it. and She's got this really big appointment. She's really stressed out about it. So I knew all the things, but as I was working on her, I could just tell it just kept recongesting and I needed to keep clearing it. And I'm working on the neck and the head and then I'm going back to these major dreams again. And then I'm working on the head and then I'm going back to the major dreams. And I'm like asking the body, can I move on now? You know, I know this person wants this. Can we do that? I'm talking with the body, not audibly, right? And then, um, I, I tell her, I go, I'm, I'm so sorry, but I think that's actually where we need to leave you. You know, we, we did 40 minutes and that's where we reach the capacity, the amount that we can move limb. I think we're, I think this is going to be the best scenario for you. She was like visibly upset about that. You know, she really wanted me to get there. So I had to reassure her again, when she got at the table, how do you feel? She's like, I do feel really relaxed, you know? So I made a point of making sure I followed up with her two days later after she had the biopsy. Hey, how did the biopsy go? Well, when she went in there, they couldn't find anything to biopsy. The lump was completely gone. So I told her, and I told her at the time too, I said, I don't know, it just feels like really, like I don't feel anything over there to work. So, I mean, I think this is what we needed to do today. But so same person, she came back and was just blown away, right? And told me, whatever you need to do at this point, like, I'm just going to trust you, right? So then um, I actually discovered another cyst on the other breast that she didn't even know about. Um, and I, I pointed it out. And that one took about, you know, four, five, six, seven, something like that. I can't remember exactly sessions to clear that one. So, you know, some sessions go away like that, right? Something that's an issue and that indicates that that's just lymph. We just needed to break it down. Something was blocked. We just needed to open it up. And I mean, honestly, she could have just been stressed about the appointment and that could have congested it more, right? Um, but yeah, so the other one, it did take a little bit more time. There was more that needed to be broken down, more that needed time in between sessions to process. It's, it's quite amazing, but... Um, yeah, so I do what I can and do, it's a service. I try to do what I can to help people, but I still have to listen to my own intuition. But yeah, so that's a perfect example of uh, tailoring it to somebody that they need, so. That's yeah. an amazing story. Yeah, really cool. I always tell people, if you have a, like a mammogram coming up, let's just sandwich appointments around that. Let's get you nice and, you know, de-stress you, turn on the immune cells, turn off the stressors. They'll be able to see everything. You were less likely to have to even need a biopsy and then come back in after all the radiation, all the stress, all the, yeah. So anyways, but yeah, so those are good. Those are good appointments to do around um, testing, right? So. Oh, oh, and uh, Carol had a question. Oh, so okay. Grief, stress, and other emotional issues affect the, the lymph. I don't know how, how to ask this exactly, but 
are you able to have good results if um if it's going on at once in a person build up for from three years ago or more so like if something i think i understand if something was happening like five years ago does that mean it's going to take longer to go away than something that happened last week is that kind of the question i believe so yes but let me just touch on something that I thought of while I was reading that, and then maybe you can um, put in there a clarifying question or something like that. But um, I had a client last week, um, I was working on super common too in the neck, but I was working on her and I just, I, you know, I was going to do like maybe one or two or three passes before I moved on to the side of the neck. And it just felt so good to add the frequency and the energy through here. And we did like gosh, like 10 or 15 passes or something. And I checked in with her maybe around past five or something. And I said, can you feel that? Can you feel how good that feels? So it's not necessarily always working an area of the body that has, we'll say like a problem. Sometimes it's actually bringing up that really good feeling in the body. And that's the way into the stuck area. So if somebody comes in and says, like an example I just gave, I'm really stressed about this area. You know, I, I will work over that area for sure. In this case, it was just the intro. I needed to make sure the major drains were working well. But if somebody told me, I feel like something's not right over here, I would definitely be checking it out and um, have no problem. We're co-creating treatment for that person. So it's not like I'm the expert of them, you know, or something. Um, they're the expert of themselves and um, they get to draw their own conclusions about things that are going on in their body. And I'm really just a guide and just helping to open up things. So it doesn't always, and I've had people where they have so much joy come up in their body. So it's not always, uh, and sometimes uh, an emotion, it's not often crying. Sometimes it's shaking or twitching. So, and those are emotions. So it's not a big emotional thing uh, necessarily, uh, meaning crying, right? Um, and then there can be really positive emotions that come up in a lot of people. But so if we lost somebody and we had a job loss or a death or something like that, and it was three years ago, uh, I mean, I think that coming in would help us. Uh, that might be the start of what we might work on. Just like I told you earlier about the gal that came in with all this puffiness, she really wanted me to clear that up. Well, I mean, we did that, but we just didn't quite do it in the journey that she thought was going to happen uh, or myself. I couldn't have predicted that. Um, but that second appointment is what brings up the chronic thing that's going on. So if it was over three years ago, some big event happened, it, we might gloss right over that and get the root of something that happened 20 years ago. And it just happens to clean out that thing that happened three years ago, that there was maybe a common thread. Does that kind of make sense? We, sometimes it can be like that. So when we're doing healing work though, and we are paying attention to what feels good in the body, again, it's a back door into that. So let me cover one other thing. We have paired areas in the body. So if somebody uh, comes in with a right shoulder pain, uh, sometimes it's the right shoulder. Sometimes it's actually across the body that's causing the issue. Sometimes it's um, a paired joint. So if it's a shoulder joint, sometimes it's the hip joint that actually we need to address, or sometimes it can be the opposite joint, um, or it can be the back of a joint instead of the front of the joint. So all of those things are from years and decades of working bodies um, that I'll, I'll actually be able to find how is the pattern moving through the body. In other words, we're getting rid of the original reason they came in, by also addressing some pattern that it was, you know, was a long time ago happening and the body was compensating and overcoming and strong and super capable. And then, oh, now it's not, it needs to be addressed. It can't move forward in life until this is better, right? And so we, maybe we resolve that first, but oftentimes we'll find another connection or another pattern and we resolve that, the root of everything, and then it clears it. So I hope I answered your question because that is uh, so definitely what can happen is we can set an intention and um, sort of be told what we kind of want to focus on. And then it's really whatever the body is ready to um, let go of. So 
Yeah, I have so many examples of that. I have one right now where a gal came in, um, she had knee replacement surgery on her left knee. And um, that was her main reason to come in. And out of that, uh, we actually treated, um, she, she had forgotten completely that she had broken her collarbone. And that was a major change in how this whole right side had drained. And um, our legs actually should be draining up a little bit through the thoracic duct, but then to the left side. And for whatever reason, uh, I can't remember, there was something else she did because I usually don't remember, I don't hold on to stories as much um, until a client comes in and then I start working on them and I remember what we're working on. But I think she had played some kind of sport or something. Now I'm not, not remembering clearly, but it was something else. And um, I think she had played tennis. And um, so she had played tennis and that was kind of a adding element to the, the reason why the body somehow routed different. So we needed to clean up this routing and then now it's been smooth sailing on the recovery of the knee replacement, uh, like dramatically better. Um, so our body does thing in a perfect order um, every time, so. The body is amazing. Yes, it just needs space. It just needs us to show up, right? It just needs, yeah, just a few little wiggle rooms of some things, nutrients. Yeah, and it can do amazing things. So, yeah, and if you- Especially with the assistance of your knowledge and expertise. Yeah, okay. you're so sweet. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Yeah, thank you so much for all the good questions and pulling the things out of me. I'm not much of a talker, actually, but or lecturer, I should, I should say. But um, yeah, hopefully that was helpful. So, oh, um, no, that was wonderful. And yeah, great questions, everyone. Yeah, great questions. So I'm so glad. And you guys stayed long. So thank you so much. Oh, yeah. Well, <laughs> you just have lots of great knowledge to share. We're like all captivated. <laughs> Yeah, I think those stories are helpful, hopefully. So, yeah. Yeah, it um, it gives that uh, community kind of sense and also that relatability. Mm -hmm. yeah. And it's like, hey, they did it. So can you, inspiration. Yeah, I it's so exciting to see people um, with, like step into their purpose is really what happens. Yeah, more of who they are, more solid mm -hmm, of knowing who they are when we do lymph work. So, and that's why your business is called Beauty Through Lymph. Yes, you know, and that comes from Lively. She is like so instrumental in that. Oh, I know. I think it was last time we, uh, or was it last time or the time before? I mean, it was a couple of times ago we talked about the harmonic egg, and I didn't even know that NW is like my initials. I just was like harmonic egg you know northwest but yeah nw I, is forward center yeah it's so yeah. cute I pointed <laughs> that out i hadn't put that together but it works yeah it was meant to be <laughs> it was meant to be yeah it's really funny well thank you so much everyone watching live with us here on the zoom meeting and on facebook we had a couple of folks pop in on there so um i did put your website in the in the uh, video description. So uh, feel free to reach out to Nicole for all of your lymph health needs. Yay. Yay. All right. Sounds good. Have a good one.